Welcome back to another edition of the Airgun Advisor. And today we're not going to be doing a review of sorts, but kind of giving you a little how-to on building a indoor pellet trap for you to, you know, you can use it for your chronograph data. You can do it inside in an air gun if you have enough room. Um, but really, you've probably seen me doing some uh, some testing inside of my shop here in some of my videos. And this pellet trap is one of the ways that I get that done. Now, a couple of words of uh, wisdom here for you guys. You're going to want to, and each pellet trap is going to be different. Look at the depth that you have here, as well as notice, or you will want to notice that the material that's inside does settle. So you're going to want to try to aim at the middle or lower as that material settles and you have to repack and so forth. Um, I'll spin this around real quick, and this is the reason why I'm rebuilding it. I recently did some testing on a Benjamin 357 for American Air Gunner, and well, it didn't go all the way through, but that 357 slug did manage to crack the back of my pellet trap here, and so it's time to build a new one. Um, you also notice the hole at the top. Well, that's how I figured out that the material inside was also settling down because I did have a pellet go through the back. And that's why I also have several sheets of plywood behind this also just as an extra uh, safety measure. You could also do something like a sheet of metal on the inside here as well as some plywood on the back. But you always want to go ahead and be extra careful because you don't want something to go through your trap and then you have a big hole in your wall or even worse, it goes through your wall and into maybe one of your living spaces. So keep that in mind as you use something like this, but uh, this is a good solution for you. Uh, to build it, what you're gonna need, a couple things. One is a nice tote of some sort. This one I picked up, I think I picked it up at Home Depot, it has locking a locking lid on it, which I like. You'll probably notice I have tape on this one, uh, but then it also allows me to fill this up with all the material, lock it down, and then also change the target face. And we'll get to that here in a little bit. And then also the material that's inside the box, well, that is regular playground mulch that you can pick up at Home Depot, Lowe's. Let's go ahead and get this opened up. And then we can uh, begin to dump everything into this box. So there we go. This will give you a little bit, bit of an idea also of what I do behind it. So I have these targets in here. Ooh. Got a lot of use in this. I don't know, I probably had this pellet trap that I made for at least two or three years at this point in time. All right, I'll crack that open. And you see I have my targets in here and then just a nice, look at that, just a nice piece of cardboard uh, from an old pizza box and got shut up pretty well. And then of course we have all of this rubber mulch uh, right in here. So what I'm gonna do, just to kind of get things started, I'm going to start to transfer some of this mulch into my new uh, pellet, pellet trap here. Uh, there should be some left over, and then I'm going to go ahead and cut out the opening that I want to do there. So it should be interesting to see what else we find in here, too. I bet you there, like I said, there's definitely got to be some 357 slugs um, and a lot of pellets. Go ahead and get... Get rid of this, we can get rid of the target, get rid of that lid. And then, well, we're just gonna dump this into this cavity here. Let's see what we get. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna stop right there, just so you can kind of get an idea and see, whoo, all the paper and dust. But look, you can see all these pellets that I have been collecting in here. And if you like or are into recycling lead for your, for your own slugs or whatever it might be, this is an awesome option. You can kind of see too, like this pellet here, it hit another pellet on the inside and just flattened out. Um, the majority of the lead that I have is going to be right here in the center where I was suggesting that you are going to want to aim at, and that's where you're going to get most of the, of the rubber mulch compacted and ready to go. I'm not going to take out all the lead today. I'm going to do that for another day. Uh, so let's keep on uh, dumping this stuff in here and see what else we find. Oh yeah, it looks like those 30 cows, they go about halfway through this easily. 
Another 30 cal. I want to see a 357 in here somewhere though. Think I can find one? I hope so. It's got to be one in here. Man, there's a lot of pellets in here. Oh, there it is. There it is. There's the 357 pellet, or should I say slug? See that? Tell you what, man, this rubber mulch trap does a great job with stopping pellets. And you notice a little over full right now. It'll settle in there. Put that in there. You're gonna have a little bit of a mess. Looks like I got enough mulch here to do two traps. I'm gonna shake it up. You can see that mulch begins to settle down in there. And that will happen, especially as you're shooting it a lot. Now this next step you could go ahead and do before you put the mulch in. I was kind of curious. I really wanted to see what was going on inside that pellet trap. So, so what I did, I went ahead and latched this shut. So yep, the mulch isn't coming out. Now on this box here, it already has kind of a design in it. And I'm going to go ahead and cut out that design so I can lay my cardboard on the inside of it and then close the lid on it. And everything's going to stay nice and tight until I shoot up the cardboard. So what you'll notice I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and drill out all the corners. All right, so all the corners are drilled out. Now I'm going to take my utility knife and I'm just going to slowly kind of cut around to those corners. Now, all right, the lid's a little bit thicker than, I, than my first one I did. So we're gonna break out the skill saw here and we're just gonna cut again from dot to dot. And this should make it plenty easy enough for us to get through this in a quick fashion. <laughs> Yeah, that was a whole lot easier. I would recommend using skill saw. Take that piece out. You notice that mulch has already started to settle in there a little bit. And a nice thing, this can be used as kind of a little bit of a template. You're gonna to wanna to go about, oh, a quarter inch or so outside of this margin so everything can stay in there, so the paper can stay in there, but it gives you a little bit of an idea of what you want. Now another option you use these old signs, oftentimes, you can find these after shows and so forth. This is from some Halloween oddities. I'm gonna go ahead and use it. I'm gonna cut it out down here at the bottom. Give myself a little extra room. Um, these work really, really well. It's actually work better than cardboard because they hold their shape better. That's said, Give myself a little more room. There we go. And I'm just gonna go ahead and cut along the line. Cut straight down. I also use these as target backers down at the range. You've probably seen me do that a few times. All right. All right, so that should fit right in there. We'll open this up. Now this is a little bit more full than the box itself. But if you look, as you open it up, the mulch stays in there. And you can set this down inside. Close the lid. There you go. And now we have a target box ready to go. Go ahead and put my targets on there and I can use this outside, inside, wherever I want. Um, you notice it does have a little bit of a lean backwards to it. So you can also put something back here to kind of give it that front. Uh, so it's nice and flat on the front, but hey, it's a great target idea. It's a great for indoor ranges. Uh, just remember that mulch can settle. So you're gonna to wanna to aim for the middle of the target. And again, putting a backer board behind it on the back side, some couple sheets of plywood, uh, three quarter inch plywood on the back, gonna really help stop in case you miss the target or 
if your projectile is just too big and it goes all the way through. Guys, I hope this helps you out a little bit. Do this with caution at your own risk, but this is what I use. Until next time, make sure that trigger pull stays smooth, those pellets fly straight, and we'll see you right here on the Airgun Advisor.